This is Chapter 16 Homework for Physics 102B at Porterville College. We'll start with number 33. Uh, regarding two protons in a nucleus, what is the potential energy between the pair? So we have the radius, potential energy between a single pair of charges is given by K times the product of the charges. In this case, they're both protons, so I have Q squared there, divided by the distance. So you plug those numbers in and you get 3.55 times 10 to the negative 14 joules. You should note that the answer key um, in the back of the book, uh, at least the version, the addition that I have is wrong, but this is the correct answer. Number 37 involves the potential energy of charges Q1 and Q2 located at those points in the xy plane. I've drawn them right here on a Cartesian uh, grid plane. What we're going to need to know is the distance between them. Pythagorean theorem says that we can find the distance between them r. That's the hypotenuse of that right triangle. r squared is the difference of their x values squared plus the difference of their y values squared. So you should get that the distance between the two charges is 0.26 meters. So when we plug in for the potential energy between the pair, we use this equation, the same as we did in number 33, although this time the charges are different. So it's K times Q1 times Q2 divided by that distance. And you should get a potential uh, energy of negative 1.99 times 10 to the negative 7 joules. The negative uh, means that it's an attractive force. Next is number 41. Two protons released from rest five millimeters apart. What is their subsequent motion and how fast are they moving at a great distance? Okay, so two protons, they're the same charge. And so as I've drawn here, you know that, um, or yeah, since they're both positive, they're gonna repel each other. So they're gonna move uh, apart from each other. Part B, ask for what is their speed at a great distance. And we can say great distance, that's where r is approximately infinity. Doesn't need to literally be infinity, like all the way across the universe, but what it just means is enough to where potential energy is sufficiently close to zero. Conservation of energy says change of kinetic plus change of potential energy equals zero. So when we turn that change into the delta K, that's final minus initial, or I have K1 minus K0 plus U1 minus U0 equals zero. K0 is zero because we release them from rest. U1 equals zero because that's what potential energy is defined to be at a great distance. And what we're left with from that line is K1 minus U0 equals zero or K1 equals U0. Now we plug in values. Kinetic energy, this refers to the total kinetic energy of the system. So that's going to be, the kinetic energy of each proton is 1 half mv squared, but there are two of them, so it's 2 times 1 half mv squared. On the right hand side of the equation, we have potential energy for a pair of charges. We take this equation and we solve it for V, and you should get V equals the square root of K times, there's the product of the two charges, in this case E squared, divided by the mass of a proton, divided by their initial distance. And you should get 5.26 meters per second. Next is number 43. Uh, 
at one meter from a point charge, electric potential is 280 volts. What's the potential two meters from the same charge? Okay, so here's the given information. R0 equals one meter, V0 is 280 volts, R1 is two meters, what is V1? We use the equation of voltage or potential difference from a point charge is equal to K times that charge divided by the distance. Let's use the technique that I've been showing throughout this year that we gather the variables to the left and the constants to the right. So this equation becomes VR equals the constant KQ. So since V times R is constant, we can have V naught R naught equals V1 R1. In that case, we're then solving for V1. We get V1 equals V0 times the ratio of R0 over R1. So it's 280 volts times 1 half, 1 meter over 2 meters. Since we are doubling the distance, the voltage gets cut in half, and it becomes uh, the answer of 140 volts. Part B. Part B says, what are the magnitude and sign of the charge? Well, in that case, then we can just, we're solving for Q. So Q equals VR over K. Now you can use, for V and R, you can use either V0 and R0 or V1 and R1. It should be the same. So I use the original information, 280 volts and one meter. And you should get the answer of 3.11 times 10 to the negative eight coulombs. Number 45, there's a potential difference of 4,500 volts. A spark jumps, releasing 1.6 microjoules of energy. How much charge was transferred? Okay, so in terms of the charge transferred, we're going to solve for what was the potential energy that was built up. So we have potential energy equals the charge times the potential difference. So the absolute value of the charge equals the potential energy divided by the potential difference, U divided by V. I'm only going with absolute value of the charge. The reason is that whether this is positive or negative, we're really not taking into consideration uh, between the, the hand and the doorknob, which was the positive and which was the negative. And uh, we really don't care that much. We're just looking for absolute value. So um, this actually will be, it's a negative answer, but I just didn't want to get bogged down in pluses and minuses. So I'm just solving for the absolute value of the charge. The potential energy is 1.6 times 10 to the negative six joules divided by 4,500 volts. And we get 3.56 times 10 to the negative 10 coulombs of charge. Part B, then how many electrons were there? Well, if the total charge is equal to the number of electrons times the charge of an electron, we have N equals Q over E, and we're taking that charge, the total charge, dividing by the charge per electron, and we get 2.2 times 10 to the ninth electrons. Number 47 involves an electric car. The question asks, what's the maximum speed of the car? So we're going to relate kinetic energy to the potential energy, or change in kinetic energy to potential energy by conservation of energy. So we have one half mv squared, that's the change in kinetic energy. It's really, changing kinetic energy is final minus initial, but we assume it starts from rest. So one half mv squared minus zero is really what's on the left hand side. Equals v times delta q. And 
uh, don't mix up your lowercase v's and your capital V's. Lowercase v is speed, capital V is voltage. But you solve for lowercase v speed, and you get this expression, square root of 2 times voltage times delta Q over M, and we get 15.5 meters per second, which is about 35 miles per hour. Number 49, okay, the charmed lambda particle. It gives its mass, its charge, find the potential difference needed to accelerate it from rest to 1% of the speed of light. Um, the math is actually very similar to number 47. Its change in kinetic energy is equal to its change in potential energy, voltage times delta Q. So we have 1 half m v1 squared, and what I haven't written is minus 0, so minus that initial kinetic energy, equals voltage times delta Q. So you solve for the voltage, and you get 1.15 times 10 to the fifth volts. Number 51. Number 51 says an ion that passes through a 300 volt potential difference gains so much kinetic energy. What is its charge? Repeat for an ion that loses the same amount of kinetic energy. Okay, so change in potential energy is Q times the voltage difference. So we get charge equals change in potential energy divided by voltage difference. Plugging in those numbers, we get 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, and that's equal to 2 times the, uh, the elementary charge. B is actually going to be the same result. It'll just be a difference of being a positive or a negative charge. I really can't answer, there's not enough information for me in the question, whether which one is positive and which one is negative between A and B. It says, because the question, the way it's worded, it says it passes through a 300 volt potential difference. And what it's not saying is whether it goes to a higher potential difference, meaning going from 0 to 300, or going from 300 to 0. It's just not saying in the problem. So between A and B, one of those is going to be a positive charge, the other is going to be negative, and without further information, we really can't answer that. The final one of this part one of the video, chapter 16 videos, is number 53. The potential difference between a pair of uh, plates is 65 volts. The plates are 3.2 centimeters apart. What's the magnitude of the electric field? All right, pretty straightforward. So the electric field is given by the voltage difference divided by the, uh, the distance between the plates. There's a negative sign in there. The negative sign just refers to um, which way the electric field points in relation to which way the, uh, the voltage drops. The question is asking for the magnitude of the electric field, so we really don't care about that negative sign. So I'll just uh, put, you see right here, magnitude of the electric field, delta V over delta X, plug in those numbers, and you get 2,030 volts per meter.